just a vast expanse of water, you know, like the sea, oceans, it's always been a fear of mine. I'm a big fan of like exposure therapy, so I thought I'd uh, give it a go and work on a cruise ship. Uh, I've worked in bars, you know, since, since I could pull a pint, so I decided to get uh, bar work on the cruise ship, so it's something familiar, but then something that's scary is you know, being on the ocean. The ship was enormous, it was like a, like a giant city floating on the middle of, of you know, the nothingness. <laughs> All different rooms and different levels. It was just endless corridors, you know? Like, you turn down one, it looks the same as if you turned down another. It was so easy to get lost there. Everything was all sleek and shiny and new, you know, elegant, but it all looked the same. So yeah, it was, uh, it was quite easy to get lost, which, which I did on my first day, get lost. Uh, it was after, after the orientation at the bar. Uh, the bar that I was working at was the Sunset Bar. It was, uh, it was so beautiful. It was modern and uh, kind of classy, and had beautiful views. There was many flavours of drinks and things, so it was nice to, to have like a fully stocked bar, a cocktail, it was exciting. Um, but yeah, I got lost like pretty much straight away. Um, I even had a map, you know, they, like, the people gave me a map so I could find my way about. Um, but no, it was, that's, yeah, I kind of panicked immediately after getting lost on like the first day. Um, but I was trying to find my cabin and like every corner just, it looked like I was turning into the same place every time, everywhere I looked and then I, I kept seeing reflections everywhere and sort of trying to walk places where there was, that's a window and it's, this sort of vastness was, was closing in. Um, uh, and I started to panic really because it was my first night, I didn't know where I was going. Um, Every turn, I think I was just getting deeper and deeper into the maze. I was just so disorientated and I flung around this corner and collided with this man. Just ran straight into him. Uh, he dropped his keys, uh, so I picked them up for him. And uh, he had a badge on and some sort of you know uniform. Uh, he said he was the chief of staff, I think. Yeah, the chief of staff. This guy. So picked his keys up. Ever so sorry. Um, he kind of took me in, you know, looked upon me, saw that I was new, gave me some hints, um, told me where to like get to my room, and said to look out for signposts. So look out for this fire hydrant, look out for that, you know, map on the wall. And after that, I was, you know, all right at navigating the ship. So yeah, I, I kind of got into the swing of things once I had the, the tips and that under my belt. Um, I was getting used to working like the graveyard shift. It was kind of like 11 at night till five in the morning. So it was much better when it was busy. Um, you know, there'd be a couple of us on and there was more atmosphere, people laughing and joking and more people to chat to and interact with, so more energy, you know. Um, my favourite part of my shift would be when dawn started coming around because, you know, the sun's rising, it's beautiful and I know it's going to be bedtime soon for me, so that's good. The quiet shifts, yeah, they're kind of creepy. It was kind of eerie. There were more like dingy corners and I don't know, it was like a spooky atmosphere, I suppose. You know, when it's kind of foggy and <laughs> it's probably because I worked alone quite a lot on the, the, the quiet shifts. Um, well, if I wasn't on my own, uh, keys was there normally. Uh, the, the CEO guy that I bumped into, um, we could always hear him coming. Just hear his heavy footfall and the jingling of his keys. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's why I call him Keys. I never got his name.
And one evening, he offered me a cigarette. Um, I explained to him, I was like, God, I can't leave the bar unattended, I'm the only one here. Uh, he explained to me about this place on, on the balcony, um, which the cameras didn't face at, they wouldn't know that I'd left the bar, and I could have a cheeky cigarette there. So yeah, I had a fag with him. It was pretty chill. I was kind of a nice little... I didn't know if anyone knew about it, so... I spoke to Joanna, who was one of the girls I occasionally worked with her if it was a busier shift, um, asked if she knew Keys. Obviously, <laughs> I didn't know his name, so... Just sort of described him, said, you know, like, he's kind of... kind of balding, and... His eyes weren't dark, but they were kind of, like, green or grey, and... His teeth were pretty horrid. They were like quite stained and, and crooked and like they'd been gnawn away. And he had thin lips. Kind of a weird smile. But but no, Joanna, never heard of him. So I thought, alright, I'll keep the little cigarette secret to myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, generally Keys was fine. I didn't really think anything of it that that Joanna hadn't heard of him because she worked the opposite shift, so it was well, he was alright until he was boozy. Ugh, get a drink in him and he will not stop, you know, life story stuff. Which I'm kind of used to being a barmaid, but he'd stop banging on about his dead wife. I'm like, okay, uh, what do I say? Just smile. <laughs> um, so other than that, other than that, he was okay. It got real weird. One night, like, it, it kind of creeped me out. So... I had just finished shift. I was on my way back to my cabin, you know, through the maze. Uh, and just as I was about to come around the corner, so I couldn't see my door, but I just around the corner from it, and I could hear this like the rattling of the doorknob and keys jingling frantically. So I darted around thinking someone's trying to get in my room or something, and and then I saw him. He's kind of facing away from me, hunched over kind of shaking like maybe like he was crying I'm thinking oh what's going on here why why are you at my door you know he's quite quite a big guy so I tentatively went over um you know just to comfort comfort him I suppose as soon as I touched him he's recoiled and spun around at me and he's got this real crazy look in his eyes he's like Linda Linda what are you doing here I'm like well, that's the name. And I froze, I didn't know what to say. And as I'm looking at him, I could see. Oh my, it was like his eyes cleared, like 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 he's back in the room, you know? And then it's like he's sort of come out of this weirdness. He's, I don't know, made some weird excuse, hurried off, literally just fucked off. And I, I was stunned. I was like, okay, that's, that's kind of creepy. After that, I, I didn't see him for a few weeks. I kind of thought I heard him a lot. <laughs> Sounds weird, but with the, the keys jingling and the footsteps. So like I'd be, be working and I'd hear something by the balcony. And then I'd go and check that there'd be no one there, nothing there, doors locked. Or from a corridor or from behind the bar. I would be walking to my cabin at night and all through the endless corridors and I'd hear ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. there'd be nothing there. I'd hear it from the other side in front of me, behind me, you know, it was, I couldn't pinpoint where the sounds were coming from. I just, I just, I thought I was minding myself up to be honest, cause you know, I was just a bit scared, you know, he kind of shouted his dead wife's name at me. Anyway, I went back to my cabin and I knew something was weird when I first walked in cause normally my cabin is a complete mess. Everything was tidy, right? so I don't make my bed. I was just normally a, a bit of a mess in my cabin. In the middle of the bed, the maid bed, where the clothes were folded and everything spotless. In this blank canvas, there sat a packet of cigarettes in the middle of my bed, which I didn't put there. It must have been him, right? How else would they have got there, right? I was so freaked out. Needless to say, I didn't sleep at all that night. And when I was at work the next the next shift, I, I resolved I was 
I knew that I had to kind of let someone know about this dude. Like, I had to kind of report that because, you know, wow, well, I don't know. Keys lets himself into people's rooms. Like, that's not, that's not normal business, right? Oh, I started to freak myself out and I could hear like the footsteps. There was no one there. I got a bit panicky and I went out onto the balcony. I thought, All right, get some air, have a fag. And I started smoking a cigarette and then I thought about where the cigarette came from. It, oh, I felt dirty, so I threw it away. <sighs> I tried to breathe, just keep calm, listen to the wind. And then on the wind from the distance, I could hear like a chiming, uh, like, like a wind chime, but kind of clangy, twinkling in on the wind. And I could hear it from one side, the other side, there was nothing there. I didn't want to be outside anymore, so I thought, um, go back in. As I've turned, he's there. He grabbed me, just grabbed my arms. He didn't say anything, he was panting, and he was, he had this crazy expression. Just, his eyes were like they were on fire, like bursting out of his skull. And his, his crooked teeth were bared around his thin lips that were white, just from the tension. I could feel it through his whole body, this tension, this this crazy energy. He just looks like, like a maniac, right? Just this wild, horrible look in his eyes. And then the next thing. And then next, I could see the stars. There was a black blanket of sky and the stars shimmering down on me. And I was weightless just for a moment. And then the weightlessness changed into this suffocating closeness, this heaviness all around me. And I could feel nothing but this, this screaming in all, all of my body. It was like I was on fire and I panicked. I could see nothing. It was black everywhere. I knew I had to reach the surface. I was thrashing and clawing at the water. And finally, my lungs flooded with air. I looked and I could just see the ship sailing away. I was alone, there, lost, this tiny thing. In this vast, emptiness uh, and I was so panicked I started to cry uh, the tears were becoming the ocean that was surrounding me that was trying to swallow me up I wasn't a great swimmer so I was trying to tread water I was trying to keep calm but I was panicking and I couldn't calm myself and because I, I was panicking I couldn't concentrate on treading water and I kept sinking and when I resurfaced, I could see the boat going further and further away each time. And each time I was coming weaker and more exhausted and more numb. And then the sky started to light, like dawn was coming. And I almost felt hopeful. I thought I'd just wait for the sun. Yes, just hold it out, ride it out. And I was almost calm until something bumped up against me and, I, and the panic was back. I thought something's going to drag me under, something's going to eat me, something's going to tear my flesh apart and there'll be nothing left, no one will know what happened. <sighs> Eventually the sky, it lit up. I could see the pinks and the yellows. They were all shimmering beneath the waves that were dancing above me. Oh, it was beautiful. And I drifted, floating down, and I could feel this burning heat in my chest. And it just it told me to let go, stop fighting. So I did.